everyone. Hi. I'm like at a weird angle so that way you guys can see the stove um, and so I can get in frame. But hi, thanks for joining me. Um, today we are going to dip dye some 100% wool yarn into some different colors of Wilton's food coloring. And oops. Aha. The yarn that we're going to be dyeing today is Knit Picks Wool of the Andes Bear Yarn, which is 100 grams of 100% wool worsted weight yarn. It is a base that I like to use a lot, um, and I use it so much that I buy it in 20 packs now. And actually, Knit Picks is having a 15% off site-wide sale. Um, my affiliate link is in the description. And yeah, so now's the time to stock up. If there's any kind of yarns that you think that I should buy to test out, let me know because I plan to take advantage of the sale as well. So today we're gonna start with four different colors of food coloring. Um, we're gonna start with copper. Yeah, well, I'm jealous that I didn't wait for the sale. I mean, I didn't know the sale was gonna happen because they don't do like flat percent of sales very often, but that's why I think I need to order some more yarn. All right, so we're gonna use copper, um, which has yellow number five, red number 40, yellow number six, and red number three. We are also gonna use aqua, or sorry, teal, um, which is, and this is an old bottle that I've had for a while, but blue number, oh, let's find in English. Blue number one and yellow number five. We're gonna look at Kelly Green, which has yellow number five and blue number one. Wait, you can't, you can't see me? Uh, I was slightly off camera, I know, cause the tripod's right against the stove. But um, if the, there's a problem with the video, let me know. Um, so Kelly Green. And then on your guys' request, I also got some juniper green, which has yellow number six, yellow number five, blue number one, and some red number three. So, oh, thank you, Cheryl. So I'm excited to do this. Um, I haven't, I wasn't able to find some of the other colors that you guys requested in my local stores, but yeah, let me know other colors that you would like to see as well. And depending on how quickly things go, um, we might, maybe I'll take some requests um, near the end. All right. So what I've got here, and now I'm gonna come back up to a boil. I have two pots, so that way there'll hopefully be less waiting periods. And e in each of them, I have seven cups of water. And here off the stove, I have an additional seven cups of water. So that way, if I need to up the volume, I'm gonna add vinegar to all three. So that way it's like the same concentration. And if I need to increase the volume of water, I have some there. Oh, that is not a tablespoon. <laughs> all right, and I'm gonna add two tablespoons of white vinegar to each pot. One, two. When you're trying to break colors, um, sometimes starting off with a little less acid helps the color, the colors break more dramatically. Um, if you have a higher acid content, the blues will uh, strike faster because reds tend to need less acid content in order to bind to the yarn. So, you know, the having, you know, you can always start maybe even with one tablespoon of vinegar, and then when you see color left in the end that isn't binding, then, uh, then you can add the whole yarn. Ooh, Hawthorne, I haven't um, done that yet. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm really excited to see what copper does as well. And I've already dyed my fingers a bit, so I should put on some gloves. Everything I'm using today is totally kitchen safe. So you can use your standard pots and pans, but uh, 
I just like to use gloves so that way I don't dye my hands different colors. Oh good. Um, I'm slightly behind the camera right now because I've started mixing the food coloring dyes already. What I'm doing is adding a half teaspoon of dye into half a cup of water. And so right before we're ready to start dip dyeing, I will first add the dye and then add the, and then start using the yarn. But like in this, in this cup, you can see that the, the dye, I think this is the Kelly grain, it's pretty clumpy. So it takes a bit of stirring to get to dissolve. A half teaspoon of dye is a lot of food coloring. Um, I also can get really stunning results using a quarter teaspoon, uh, but yeah, I'm pretty excited for this juniper green. Alright, but I think I'm going to start with the copper, because um, this one, I've seen some really pretty stuff from people. Okay, I am going to turn you down and turn you down. Oh, and I need to make sure I have my yarns. So I did not, um, I pre-soaked the yarns overnight in just plain tap water. And then, yeah, I'm not doing, putting them through the salad spinner. I did squeeze out by hand a lot of the water, but so they're just um, in the standard hanks. Okay, let's start with the copper. Do you guys have any predictions? All right, I tend to start adding the yarn in pretty quickly because the red number threes can crash out pretty fast. Um, oh, my tongs are over here. I like using tongs. Um, whoops. Eek. To help me. Oh, well, that's, that's a really pretty kind of rust color. Interesting. I'm not sure if we're really seeing a lot of breaking. Well, maybe I put it in a little too fast as much as just a gradient. I mean, it's certainly pretty red down at the bottom but I don't know if it's also just an intensity difference. Eek. All right, I'm gonna add this last little tip in. Do, do, do. I mean, that's definitely yellower. Um, it's definitely less red. And there was red number three, which we know does bind pretty quickly. Let me grab something to help us see. Yeah, there's still a fair amount of color in the yarn. Ooh, a wagon wheel or a rusty old truck. Cool. Yeah, so I'm going to let this sit. I think I'll check back on this one in five minutes. Um, and first, before I start doing the aqua, um, yellows was a prediction. Yeah, I'm really, really excited um, by these colors. Orange tends not to be one of my favorites, but uh, I think that the yarns that you can get are still absolutely gorgeous. Um, in general, as you guys know, I'm a big blue and purple fan. <laughs> All right. Oh, I better get the yarn ready before. I add the dye and make sure my hands are clean. Eek. Yeah, because sometimes, well, I'll show you. When I first pick up the yarn, I need to, since I don't add additional ties to the yarn because I'm a bit lazy, um, really, if I was doing this properly, I should probably tie off the yarn in a few more spots. So that way, oh, why did that come out? Um, I should probably tie off the yarn in a couple more spots here, like on the side, so then it wouldn't become a tangled mess. But I've thankfully been pretty lucky with that respect. 
Yeah, the... Uh, after I did the last live stream, Dip Dying with Wilton's Violet, these were a bunch of colors that people requested. I haven't done a Dip Dying Violet in a while um, on video. I've done it off camera because I've been making the Kickstarter rewards. Okay, so here is the teal. I don't know if, I don't really expect to see any breaking with the teal, but I think that we could get a really nice uh, color gradient. Um, oh, look at that blue. Um, this is so vibrant. Oh my gosh. Uh, with, when I'm dipping, dip dyeing for Wilton's Violet, um, I usually have to go really, really fast, even using a half teaspoon of dye because the reds strike so quickly that if I want to get a gradient up the length of the yarn, I need to do it really, really quickly. Whereas right now, you'll notice that I'm going pretty slowly. And that's because I know that the blues bind a lot slower and I don't, I want there to be some difference in the colors. Let's see. Yeah, there's still a lot, a lot of color left in here. But these colors are super pretty. Oops, trying to keep dipping in order. <laughs> Do, do, do. Yeah, I haven't really observed much breaking in greens or oranges. I have some Wilton's Color Perfect. All right, I'm going to add the tip in now. Uh, or maybe just one second. Uh, I have some Wilton's Color Perfect liquid food coloring. Um, ooh, that seems... You guys, we might have just seen some breaking with, I mean, we'll see how the color ends up at the end, but that is pretty blue versus blue green. So I'm excited to see how this, this one turns out. I was just saying that normally I don't see a lot of color breaking with greens or oranges, at least in the ones that I've tried. Um, I think that with the juniper green, we'll probably see some breaking because there is some red number three in it, but I don't know quite how much. Oh man, but look at this. I think that, I mean, I think that the yellow must have all struck. But I was saying that I have some Wilton's Color Perfect system and I want to, um, and some of them, I think that I've got like some, it has some bottles that just have red number three or red number 40 in it. So then I can try to mix an orange that will break. And so I'm excited to play with that at some point, but I haven't even tested those. All right, that's still a lot of blue. All right, our five, whoop, I almost tripped over my yarn. The five minutes are up, let's check the color. That water is pretty clear. All right, so I'm now, after just rinsing my tongs, no reason to contaminate this beautiful copper yarn. So, you know, we'll have to look closely. And I think that kind of like when I did the breaking orange video, it'll be a bit up for a debate whether or not we see some tones of orange or let's see if I can arrange this so we can see all the colors. If there's tones of orange or if it actually gets less red and so is broken. It's gorgeous. Um, I think that the orange is more of a burnt orange color versus a pumpkin orange. Uh, so, but it does look more tonal instead of uh, broken to me. This teal though, oh, I am so excited. All right, I'm gonna add 
add a couple, this is a half cup thing. I'm gonna add, I guess, oh, it's a third cup. Ha, huh. all right. I'll add one and a third cups of water back to this. Bring up the heat. And then I think, uh, well, I'll see how my greens have dissolved before we decide on which color. Oh, I don't think I set a timer for the, for the teal. Yeah, there's still a lot of blue in there. Set a timer for 10 minutes. Um, I know that sometimes, you know, it's possible that I see with the black, when I dip dye with black food coloring, um, I'll, if I start with two tablespoons of vinegar, I then usually end up needing to add another tablespoon of vinegar for all the blue to bind. Ooh, a seafoam green coming from the teal. Yeah, so if there's leftover blue in the pot that you want to bind to the yarn, add, increase your amount of vinegar because some of the blue, sometimes blue can be pretty stubborn and it likes a lot more acid to bind. I'm gonna step over here and see if there's any other questions. Uh, oh, Dee, don't worry. Um, since you're just tuning in, um, so far I've done copper. Um, I used a half teaspoon of copper on the 100 grams of wool, and then the teal is still absorbing the dye. And then the next two colors I have in the queue are juniper green and kelly green. So which one would you guys like to see next? If you wanted to do two or more skeins together to get two of the same dye lot, would you double amount of dye in the pot? Yes. So I have, and I think maybe I'll do a video about this at some point, but I have been dying for the Kickstarter rewards two skeins of yarn at a time. And I think, did I actually have my formula? Oh, good, the dyes seem to have dissolved. I might have my, yeah, okay. So this were the notes that I kept for myself when I was doing 200 grams of yarn at a time. I did, I used a larger pot, so I started with 10 or 11 cups of water. I added three tablespoons of vinegar, and then I added a whole teaspoon of Wilton's Violet um, into, I think, a cup of water before starting and let that dissolve. And then again, I would add the dye um, and then immediately stir it up, immediately start dip dyeing the yarn. And I would just hold two skeins of yarn together as I was doing that. And the colorways are pretty consistent. I mean, having tongs or a spoon to help you um, dip it into the dye pot is really, really helpful. But, funny you should ask. All right, so, all right, juniper, sounds good. Is it a problem to add too much vinegar? Yes. Um, so, and you see this in some of the older videos, I've gotten better by adding the dye right before I start dip dyeing. Um, versus adding the dye at the beginning and raising the temperature. Uh, because if you add too much dye, the red number three can start crashing out. And you can see particles along the top of the, the yarn and you can see a tiny bit around the edge here. But if you start adding the yarn right away, then these particles have a chance to, uh, before the dye like, crashes out of solution, it might bind to the yarn. Uh, but sometimes, and some of the older dyes, I think that there's some part particles already. So, all right. So Juniper Green won the, I think was, from what I saw, was pretty unanimous. And so if you're just joining in, I mixed a total of, and I know this is a quarter teaspoon, but I added two. I'm mixing a total of a half teaspoon of dye um, of Wilton's food coloring in half a cup of water and then adding it to about seven or eight cups of water that has two tablespoons of vinegar in it. Um, and I pre-soaked the 100 grams of 100% wool yarn in just plain water overnight. Um, I for, Usually you can soak the yarn for 20 or 30 minutes and that is totally sufficient. I was just, I knew that I was going to my kids' school this morning um, for a little bit, so I wanted to make sure 
that the yarn was pre-soaked so I could start this live stream on time. And what pre-soaking does is, is it allows you um, to, sometimes you might pre-soak with vinegar if you're gonna hand paint, but pre-soaking in water and having the wet yarn allows the dye to absorb a little more evenly. All right, let's set this over here. And where did I put, ah, here's my juniper green. All right, I'm gonna reduce the temperature. Is there any, um, oh, is it, sorry, yes, I, I did mean vinegar. Um, it's possible to add too much vinegar. It's also possible to add too much dye. There is a limit to the amount of dye that you can, uh, and I haven't really found that yet, but at some point, you know, no more dye will bind to the yarn. So, but I found that you can get really, really saturated, vibrant colors from these Wilton icing colors if you start with a half teaspoon. All right, this is the juniper green, which I have never dyed with before, but ooh. Okay, so you can see already towards the bottom, and I don't wanna to pause too, too long. You can see the reds. Um, there's a fair amount of red in this because that all struck pretty quickly. Wow, you guys. Um, this is so pretty. Um, oh my goodness. Hopefully I'm not blocking you guys too much. Um, sorry, I should. Wow. That is cool. I'm a little nervous. I can't tell. Okay, that's pretty green at this point. I think all the red has bound. Because I know that with Wilton's Violet, if I want to get the blue in, I need to then add the end of the yarn pretty quickly. So I'm now going to add the tip. Oh, check out that green. This is probably gonna take a while to absorb. Um, all right, I still have the timer going from the previous one, but let's see the, the color that's left. There's a lot of this green left over. And I think that if this hasn't, oh look, ha ha, the water is clearing. Um, it's just slow. Sometimes there will be a tiny amount of blue left over. I mean this, can you, yeah, you can see that it's slightly bluish. That amount of blue doesn't really affect the overall color of the yarn very much. So I would dip dye in the same pot, um, whereas, because you know, you see like how dark this is, even after a bunch has already added onto the yarn. Let me check for. On the subject of color fastness, how does food coloring handle multiple washes? Does it fade fast? So there's a playlist on the channel called FAQs. And in one of them I used, um, I took some hand dyed yarn that I dyed with food coloring and I knit a swatch and I put it through a wash cycle on cold in my washing machine. And I think I may have put it through the dryer. I don't remember if I put it through the dryer as well, but I saw no noticeable fading. I mostly hand wash most of my hand knits anyway, just because I like to block things at the end. But I found like, I have things that I dyed years and years ago that have gone through multiple washings. And if I compare it to some of the the original yarn that I still have that I had dyed. And this is actually the first 100% wool colorway that I ever dyed. Um, it's still really, really bright. Uh, so it's the only time I've really seen fading is when I made a butterfly that I knit out of some hand dyed yarn. And there's a video on the color fastness as well on the channel um, or light fastness. I left it on the windowsill for a while and it faded but it was in direct sunlight for months. And so my winter accessories that I wear frequently, but live otherwise in a closet, those have been pretty fine. Um, so I've been very happy with it. Now I haven't, um, I'm not a big sock knitter, so I haven't made 
any socks out of any of the yarn that I've dyed. So therefore, I can't say how much something that needs that frequent washing would hold up. Um, but sun, sun would fade a lot of things. Uh, is the water not hot enough? So the, the water is really hot. The reason why I'm not at a boil is because I don't want to risk felting the yarn. These aren't super wash yarns. And what we can see, I think we let this teal yarn sit in for 15 minutes. And sometimes it just takes some time. But the red's behind super fast. And so if we, and we also have a lot of dye in here. Um, a half teaspoon of food coloring is a lot of dye. If I used less, the colors would strike a lot faster. Um, and so already this is becoming more and more teal. Um, and so the, the water is starting to clear over here. So I'm glad that I did a few different pots. Um, and all right, I think I am ready to remove, oh yeah, I'm ready to remove this teal yarn. Sometimes even after the water is cleared, there will still be some bleeding uh, when I wash the yarns, but most of the time I don't have a huge problem with that. I will say that even after like I've washed the yarns and the waters run clear, with any hand dyed yarns, I recommend washing them alone the first time because you can still get some bleeding sometimes. But washing them on cold will also help. Oh, you guys, check it out. There's definitely breaking going on here. Um, the, the bottom is way more green. I can't rotate it very well. Yeah, the bottom is way more green and that blue at the end is so deep. This is amazing. All right, let's see, let's put this down so I can show you the, the difference in the colors. I mean, the depth of tone, I, if we were to make this grayscale, the, the dark teal would still be darker. There's no question that there is a lot less yellow in here. So yeah, I need to do some more oops, research on yellows. Let's see if I can arrange this without burning myself. Uh, okay, well not in the nice little circles that I like, but if it cools, I will come back and show it as a recap at the end. Uh, is there a question? Yeah, it's so pretty. Oh, yeah, no, using, I love, 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 love color work. Um, and so I love mixing different hand dyed yarns exactly in stripes or even just simple uh, color work patterns. Um, I like doing the knit one below technique um, with variegated yarns. You get some really cool mixing of colors. Um, so before I start this last one, um, with the Kelly green, do you guys have any requests? Because I could put some more yarn into soak and then add some other colors after the Kelly green. So, um, I think I have available, um, my stroll sock yarn base right now. And I have uh, some more of this 100% wool, wool of the Andes yarn. The stroll yarn is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. So let me know if there's any color requests. And, um, you know, I could do some violet or some black. Um, how would stroll work dipped in black? Okay. Uh, where is it? And before I stick this bare stroll in the, in the water bath, I'm going to give another plug for the Knit Picks 15% off sale. Um, I am kind of bummed that I did my biggest yarn order ever and then this sale came up, but um, I do have my affiliate link in the video description 
and I do plan to order some more yarns myself because when I buy yarn in a 20 pack I get a 15% discount off of the retail price of an individual skein and so this sale means that I can buy singles of other yarns that I'm not willing to commit to 20 yet and still get that good price. Um, yeah, the, oh, I don't know if you get deals with your very first order. Um, I've been a customer a really, really long time. And I started going to them for bare yarns exactly because you can order one skein of yarn at a time versus having to start with 10. Um, what do I do with the yarns after dyeing? Are they for sale? Um, right now, so I just closed a Kickstarter, I, my Kickstarter campaign just ended. So I did a round of fundraising to help me get supplies and stuff for more awesome dyeing videos. So there isn't currently any yarn for sale. Um, uh, I don't know, Sherry. Um, I pro <laughs> probably, um, but uh, yeah, so I'm, I don't have any yarns for sale right now. I might, after all the Kickstarter rewards are fulfilled, maybe if I start accumulating yarn, I'll do de-stash sales once in a while. Um, yes, so I've got, I'm gonna do some sock blanks with black and let me see what else. And welcome to the channel. What was the color of the first yarn? The first yarn, was, ooh, one skein in two different colors. Yeah, I could do a skein in two different colors. Um, okay, so the first yarn I did was copper. Um, and in all of these, I used half a teaspoon, excuse me, of food coloring on 100 grams of yarn. And that gives you these really deep saturated colors. Oh, I, I, I'm not, a, I'm not aware if there's anything that I need to do differently. Um, you'd love to see me dye super vibrant and neon. Hmm. So some of these colors, so I mean, this isn't quite neon. It is, it is brighter than, uh, yeah, um, I guess I haven't gotten anything that's a true neon. I've started playing with some other commercial dyes uh, that come out really cool. Um, no, this is not spaghetti, this is yarn. Um, yeah, okay, and so then in, if you're just joining in this pot, we have the juniper green. Aha, and see with just some patience, the yarn is starting to clear. Um, yeah, that blue, this blue is really, really fun. Um, yeah, and, okay, so I've got the stroll pre-soaking, so that way, um, when I'm ready to mix more colors, we can get that going. But first, oh, I should set up the yarn first. First, let's do the Kelly Green, because that was one of the ones that was requested after my last video. And of course, I didn't bring a list with me when I went to the store, and so I tried to remember as many of the colors as I could. I know I've gotten a lot of requests for some of the different reds in the icing color line, and so maybe next time I do one of these videos, I can look at the reds. Um, I am gonna add, I think I'm gonna add a tiny bit more water before I start. Whoops. Um, this water that I have over here had the same vinegar proportions that I started with originally, so that way I can just add more volume. Yes, absolutely. Um, I have, well, okay, so the question was, have I ever applied food coloring drops to yarn and then set the color um, to yarn directly? And so... Oh, I'm trying to think. I have, I mean, I've certainly hand painted with food coloring directly. I've never used one of, like, I've never used, like, just the food coloring dropper directly um, and to yarn. I've always diluted it first, but I would be willing to do that at some point. Ooh, cherry would be fun. I did burgundy in the last 
um, live video. Ooh, Wilton's violet and Wilton's pink. Oh, that's pretty. Okay, so I, all right, once this heats up, we'll do the Kelly green. Um, rinsing out my die cups and measuring spoons so that way I can get ready to mix some more colors. All right, someone asked what colors I have access to. Um, let's see, obviously I have violet and black. Um, and then I've got teal, royal blue, delphinium blue. Um, the colors that we did today. Uh, I've got, I'll have to, I'll, I'll go look and see what other colors I've got besides the black. Um, And so for the black, I'm actually going to use a quarter teaspoon of dye. Ah. Okay, that's not quite ready yet. And this, aha, the water is just about as clear as it's going to get, but I will leave it in there as I am setting up these next colors. I'm moving things around. All right, so color-wise. I'm going to dip dye some stroll in black, and then I have a second skein of straw in pre-soaking. So I've got violet, royal blue, black, uh, delphinium blue, burgundy, brown, copper, teal, kelly green, and juniper green are the colors of Wilton's food coloring that I currently have access to. I think that's this is the new, yeah, so I'm going to add some black to some water right now. Oops, I think this is the old black. I'm going to do the new formula because that's the one that you guys will find if you go to the store. Yeah, so the new Wilton's black, by new, I mean like a, within the last couple of years, red number 40, blue number one, yellow number five, and blue number two. Where is my, ah, here's my half cup. And I am periodically trying to check the computer for questions. So if I miss something, because it's gone off the screen, I apologize. Um, I don't think that you can really see. All right, so this is a bit more because <laughs> it's a little over full than a quarter teaspoon of black but it's not definitely not um, a half teaspoon yet ah, so I will let this start dissolving so that way it'll be ready to go when we are ooh black and royal blue Some, some leftover what from paper marbling. Uh, I have never used any kind of mordant with food coloring. Um, I'm not sure how it would, I don't know what that is, um, how it would shift the colors or anything. Um, but I will start doing this Kelly green right now. Is it possible to achieve pretty consistent lengths of color? Um, I guess it can depend. Uh, so if you want, I mean, you could would have to play around with your techniques, I think. I think that if you were, where did the tongs go? Oh, okay, over here. I think that if you were to play around with the you know, the rate at which you added and monitored your concentrations of everything really closely. Um, maybe you could get pretty consistent lengths of yarn. Um, I will say that with this untreated non superwash wool, uh, you can get a much more consistent gradient. Things end up being a bit patchier uh, with the stroll at least with the violet. And I've done 
a lot of violet dip dyeing right now. Um, preparing, because I offered some members of the backers of the Kickstarter uh, pledged extra for a skein of dip dyed broken violet. All right, and now I'm gonna slow down to see if we get something that starts to get a little bluer. Yeah, the greens, whew, when I'm doing violet or something at this point, I would have already added the entire skein into the pot to capture as much of the blue as I can. The red number three binds so much faster than other colors do. Okay, that's still very green. And if you really wanna break colors, sometimes using a lot of dye like I am today can make it a little harder even because, so these greens aren't, ah, that might be getting a little bluer. The greens absorb um, pretty slowly. So that makes this a bit harder. Oof, it's getting hot over here and it is a cool, cool day in New England. Okay, so I am now gonna add the rest of the yarn in, but it looks like this is a bit bluer. I want to explore, I know that some oranges are just one of the yellow food coloring molecules, and I want to explore the different yellows a bit because we definitely saw with the teal, I would say that the teal definitely broke. And so what was in this one? Um, yellow number five. I need to do some more research on the yellows. Um, how much salt? No salt. Um, yes, I'm in New England. I'm in Massachusetts. Oh, the, the colors, the colors in the, in Europe are different. I think the food coloring molecules are probably the same. At least if they are called the same number, then those are the same. But yeah, it's possible that the formulations are pretty different. Um, so yeah, and I I know nothing about the proportion, like when you read I think burgundy, royal blue, violet, and delphinium blue all have the same dye molecules in them, just at different, um, in different proportions. Was this, did you try, what color were you trying? Because I know black, oops, I wanna reduce this heat. I know that blacks have changed over the years. So, okay, hot, hot. Huh, okay, I may have added this a little soon. This is gonna be pretty tonal, like the green at the bottom is much deeper than at the end, but there's still a, just a lot of dye in here. Um, okay, it's mostly teal at this stage. I think that if maybe I'd been a little more patient um, to add that last bit, then maybe we could have gotten some to break. I think sometime I might take another look at Kelly Green. Um, and use less dye and see what we can get. Or even superwash yarn, because the, the dyes strike faster. Oh, right, I need to remove. I need to remove this juniper green has been sitting in here for a while. Nice and patient. Super, super patient waiting for me. Eek. All right. You can see that the water is pretty clear. Well, I saw don't give up and I'll have to go and see what that's about. But look, we've got like a, the juniper green broke from about a brownish, a reddish brown into a nice um, kind of forest or olivey green. Um, so this is really, really pretty. Um, I think I've seen with less, when people use less food coloring, sometimes it can look more pink at the bottom into a pale green, but it just, again, a half teaspoon of food coloring is a lot of dye. Um, so that is 
really pretty. Okay, I'm going to check on my pre-soaking buddies. So I am curious because I haven't done, I haven't tried breaking black on stroll, on the Knit Pick stroll base before, but I know that on the 100% wool, I need to add um, more vinegar to get it all to absorb. Yeah, that's really blue right now. I will definitely take a closer look at the Kelly Green sometime. Okay. All right, so I may have missed, because I asked you guys to pick colors for another scheme. Hey, failures teach me a lot. Um, I, I learned so much from doing all these experiments. Uh, hey, North Shore, awesome. Wow, you did fountain pen ink. Oh no, you haven't tried fountain pen ink, but printer ink works. Yikes. Um, avocado skins. That sounds pretty cool. I've had people try, um, people have been asking me to try red cabbage. I guess if you add acid, then it ends up looking really kind of cool. So that is something that I might have to try out at some point. But all right, now that we've gone through um, a lot of the colors I have, um, what should I do after the black? Well, I guess, okay, before I get too ahead of myself, I'm gonna set a 10 minute timer for this one. Um, Cause the black sometimes takes a while to absorb. So first I'll do the black and then we will figure out colors for the next one. So unlike all the rest, I am only going to use a quarter teaspoon of black food coloring in, in the dye bath. I did a side by side with that um, amount of dye. I did a quarter teaspoon and a half teaspoon on 100% wool. Um, and the, the colors with the half teaspoon were gorgeous. It's just it was a lot harder to see. The breaking was a lot more subtle because there was just so much dye. All right. And I pre-soaked this yarn in just plain water and I'm just hand squeezing out most of the water. But you'll see that, well, all right, my prediction <laughs> is that we'll see that the dye absorbs much more, um, much less evenly along the, the length of the fiber. Let's bring up the heat. Um, because doing these wool yarns, oh, this is cooling off nicely now, so I can kind of make a little circle so we can see all the colors here. Um, but this, this gradient is pretty even. So, yeah, I, I still, I now have a uh, laser printer versus an inkjet, which, because our, so we have like a, fin we have a finished third floor in our house and it gets really cold up there in the winter. And I think that we kept, and really hot in the summer, and I think we kept drying out our cartridges. Um, so this was the copper. And off camera, I'm going to wash these in once they cool completely with some dish soap. Okay, this one is still pretty hot. Um, I'm going to wash them with some, I like Dawn dish soap. And then I also, um, and then cool water. But I'll probably do that after the kids go to bed. Okay, here's our juniper green. Those colors are so cool. And I think teal, teal and royal blue are two new favorites of mine. Uh, looks like spinach spaghetti. Mm. Uh, whoops. 
Yeah, your uptake of her fiber is highly dependent on fiber content, the acid of the bath, and the temperature. Yep. Um, the, yeah, that's like what I've observed as well. The uh, Sometimes with the black, and it could be because I was impatient, but sometimes to get that last bit of blue to bind, I've needed to up the vinegar concentration. So, all right, guy, come up to a boil, and then I'll reduce the temp. I try to stay at just below a boil when I'm dyeing yarn um, because, yeah, it without the bubbles, there's just less agitation of the fibers. And again, the vinegar content, so I started off with seven cups of water and then added two tablespoons of vinegar, and so far, um, I've increased the volume with some more water in that proportion, but I've also, I guess, added a total of one cup of water with no vinegar to this, to each of these dye baths so far. Um, yeah, these are really, really fun. If it's breaking too quickly and patchy, you can reduce the acid and lower the temp. Um, or you need to dunk more quickly. Yes. I, with Wilton's Violet, I have a pretty good feel for how quickly I need to add the yarn into the pot. Basically, as soon as I see it go from just kind of purplish to blue, I immediately add the rest of the skein to the water um, because that the, the violets can go really, really, really fast. Yikes, that's hot. <laughs> All right, so another five minutes have passed on this guy. Oh yeah, we're making progress. Sometimes you just have to be a little patient. <laughs> uh, yeah. So sometimes when it comes to reskeining, do I have, did I get, yes, I have some recommendations for acid dyes that break. I don't have, I don't remember what they are off the top of my head, I think. Um, Dharma brand avocado, and I think that there's a purple and maybe a brown that I've been told break, and so I'm planning to order those. I'll get the Kickstarter funds, I think, probably around Wednesday. They hold the money for two weeks, and then it might take a couple days. And so once I get that, then I'm going to start uh, placing a really, really big order with Dharma and, and get a lot of different acid dyes. Yeah, it's hard waiting. Oh, cool. A lot of the advanced colors break. Yeah, the I am completely new to acid dyes. Um, and I really wish I could save all the comments from these chats, but they go away once the, the um, live stream is done. There's a lovely tobacco leaf. Ooh, lime green and rust. Yeah, um, send, like, if I, I'm going to try to go and write some of these down. But if I miss some, feel free to like, I might ask, you know, comment on the video so that way you can, I can like keep track of these colors. Okay. So we've got our Wilton's black. Oh. I actually almost got a true black or very close to a true, true black with hand painting. The other day, I was very excited. Ooh. So I have not done black on the stroll base before, so I'm not quite sure how quickly or slowly I need to go. But especially after uh, doing doing a bunch of violets where I know I need to go really quickly. Ooh. Uh, I think that part of my problem with blacks is that I tend to go a little too fast. Um, red number 40 takes a lot longer. Oh, there we go, we're starting to get some blue. Red number 40 takes a lot longer to bind than the red number three. But, I don't want to miss, oh, let's see, we're getting our blue, but I don't want to go in too quickly because sometimes 
Oh no, I think it's all blue that's left. Um, so I want to hit the blue, but I don't want to miss it. Because you see, if I had gone slower, oh, you can't see the top. If I had gone slower, I probably could have gotten more, blue, a larger blue section in there. But, you know, this is really, really pretty. And, all right, when the timer is done for that one, I'm going to need to set a timer. But there's still a lot of blue in here. So I'm not sure if it really needs more acid or if I was just impatient and needed to wait like 15 minutes um, for that to, to go. I've got a minute left on my timer over here and this is really, really close to clear. I mean, that, that amount of blue is pretty uh, negligible um, when it comes to the total amount of dye that we are seeing in some of these. Um, if you look at the advanced list on the Dharma site, you'll see the colors that break easily. Okay, because yeah, I've been getting a little, well, not confused, but there are so many acid dye color choices. And a lot of people who are dying don't want colors to break necessarily. Even though Dharma talks about how like using it to your advantage and stuff. Frequently when something's breaking, a lot of times people complain. Um, ooh, I love speckling with things that break. Um, I want to play more with that. Ooh. Okay, so this doesn't seem that spotty, but then again, red 40, I mean, red number three just kind of goes like that. Oh, I love I love help with my experimentation and I'm over here waving my hands and you can't see me because I was off camera. All right, I'm gonna take that one out and I'm gonna set the timer for 10 minutes for our black. Let's check out our hot, hot Kelly green. So I don't remember if someone today was asking for some subtle tonal variation, but I think that that's pretty much what we got here. There's definitely, um, and I'm not sure how well it'll read on camera, there's definitely some tonal differences in here. Oh yeah, you can see. And my personal sense, I don't think I would call it breaking, but I think that there is, there is definitely yes, less yellow towards the end. So I think that what I need to do next time is be really, really patient or start with less dye and be patient and leave part of the yarn not dipped in so that way I can push it a little further. Okay, where am I gonna put you? My counter is covered in my favorite soup bowls. <laughs> um, yeah, all right, so Now's the time to bring in your requests. I've heard some people say that they want two different colors. Would you want me to mix two colors in the pot? Um, I think that, yeah, I think maybe let's do a mixture and I'll put two colors of dye in the pot at the same time and then dip dye into that. So what are the two colors that you guys would like to see? Black and copper. Ooh, that's a good suggestion. I know that a bunch of people gave suggestions earlier, um, but I've lost track. <laughs> I've lost track, unfortunately. Uh, I love stroll fingering so much. Um, I really like making, I, I love making shawlettes and stuff. Um, just right now, my youngest is in the I will tear needles out of everything phase. Um, that's still a ton of blue. I probably will need to add more vinegar there. Okay, copper and teal, juniper and copper. Copper and teal. Not good at pairing two colors, would love to see what I suggest. Black and blue or black and green. Another vote for copper and teal. 
All right, I see three votes for copper and teal. And so that sounds like fun. Should I do equal uh, proportions? Uh, let's think. What measuring spoons do I have available? Because <laughs> so that's an eighth. You guys have me hunting. Unfortunately, I need to get more measuring spoons because we have unfortunately lost some <laughs> to the, the graveyard that is the garbage disposal. Um... <laughs> It's quite unfortunate. Okay. I'm gonna add half a cup of water. Uh -huh, here it is. Ah. Before I start mixing, I'm going to bring this temperature back up. So there is some residual blue in here and it looks a lot darker than it actually is um, compared to the amount of teal and copper that we're going to add. Okay, so see, I just dipped this paper towel in and you can barely register any color on it. I lose measuring spoons when your boys empty the dishwasher. Hmm. Keith actually is the one who's in charge of dishes in our house. Um, so. I'm lucky. Although, when I'm doing a lot of dyeing yarn, then I uh, help more because uh, I make a mess, <laughs> use a lot of dishes. Uh, all right, I, oh, I don't want to use half teaspoon of each. Okay, but I'm going to do, I'm going to guesstimate since I don't have two quarter teaspoon spoons, I'm going to do approximately half of a half teaspoon of teal. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the copper. Yeah, so about half full. I am very curious how these colors will mix. And so even though I have done roughly equal proportions of the food colorings, different food coloring colors have different potencies. Um, so like the black has a lot more food coloring in it than say the Kelly green because I've used, I used half the volume and we've got a much darker color. All right, this will take a little time to get the clumps off. Overall, mixing the copper and the teal kind of has a greenish hue, like the splashes look a little green. <laughs> My kids are too young to empty the dishwasher. I mean, the one-year-old would like to, but then things really would get lost <laughs> forever. Um, well, he is pretty good at finding his own water cup these days. All right. That's pretty good. So once we get the, once we get the dye bath to close to a boil, then I'll add the dye and start. <laughs> And I guess it's time again for me to plug the 15% off Knit Pick sale. And my affiliate link is in the video description. And so I'm bummed that I didn't take a chance um, and I missed it. But I was also on the fence. So in November, Knit Picks always does a really big sale. And once I scored a bunch of roving for a dollar for 100 grams. So it was really discounted because they have like things that are um, mistake colorways and things that they're closing out. Um, and so they just like deeply, deeply reduce everything. I think the first one was four years ago or something. It was really excited. 
exciting. So it was like a Cyber Monday type sale. And yeah, so I don't know what kind of specials they're going to have for that. They haven't announced the date of the really big sale. I think it started around like November 15, 14th or so last year. Um, and so it's been hard. I'm like, ooh, do I hold out for that? Or, but now there's this 15% off sale and I don't want to miss out. I know I'm going to buy, I think, an Earth Hues natural dye kit, which has logwood and some other um, different kinds of natural dyes that I want to play with. Um, I also have an indigo tie dye kit already that I'm really excited to use. And yeah, I'm going to pick up some other individual bases. Oh, thank you for sending me an email with dye suggestions. Yay! Um, yeah, some people on Ravelry have been really, really helpful um, as well with sending suggestions. Um, I'm a little nervous to go into acid dyes, but I've purchased, I've got some new Pyrex measuring cups for, that I'm going to use for mixing the dyes. I got a bunch of um, canning jars to use for stock solutions because they can handle the heat. Um, I got, um, I want to get another a set of metal measuring spoons to use, but I have some plastic ones that I got at the dollar store. And of course I have my new dye pot, which is beautiful and amazing and will uh, be featured, well, I don't know quite when, but sometime in November, I think the first videos with that will come out. Uh, Okay, this is the reason why you should add more ties as I'm trying to find the, um, trying to organize this yarn so I can do the dip dyeing. Uh, it'll just take me a minute. Uh, I mean, I'm telling you guys about my plight, even though it's like, part of me is like, phew, I'm glad I'm off camera. Oh, let's see. Oh, that is clearing. It looks really dark in the pot, but I think it's because it's a dark blue. So maybe I just needed to be patient. I'll add another 10 minutes on the timer. <laughs> All right, I'm almost there. But, okay. Oh, and I need another two bowls. These pasta bowls are the best things we ever got. I love these Corel dishes. My grandparents have had the same set since I was a kid, and so I was really excited to have some of my own because the kids can drop them and it's fine. Stainless steel, yes, I got a stainless steel pot. Um, I forget the brand because it's not something that I've used before, but uh, well, actually, she's right, she's right here. Oh, okay, so the brand is Salt. Um, this is the, the new dye pot. I was hoping for a five-quart pot, but this is an eight-quart pot. It had a pasta insert and a steamer basket and was not too expensive. So I was very excited about that. All right, let's dip dye. This is our teal and copper mixture. And I did roughly a quarter teaspoon of each color. And I'm gonna try to go slow um, as I'm dipping. All right. Whoa, I didn't really expect that. This looks a lot, um, <laughs> it looks a lot like the black. Uh, <laughs> Where are oh, my tongs are right here? Oh, you guys, this is cool. All right, so we're going from like almost, I'll have to wait until it dries to get a sense of what that color is. But that is super, super cool. I have no idea if that's brownish or more, or if it's, I mean, it could be black. All right, I'm gonna go slow and go up and down before I add the rest. Um, in case there's still some more red and stuff. I mean, we're pretty 
blue right now. Oh, this one is so cool. You know, if you guys hadn't suggested it, okay, that's getting paler. I'm going to add the end in. If you guys had not suggested this combination, I never would have gone there. I never would have thought I would have been like, ooh, mixing orange and teal. Ooh, we're risking like, like gross brown. Even though, okay, I actually really like the color brown and my last name is brown. <laughs> so I'm nothing against brown, but, um, you know, you can get, ah, oh, look how nicely this color is starting to clear up. Um, we're going to need to be pretty patient with our cool mixture over here. Um, let's see. Do I ever re-skein your yarn into long skeins for longer gradients? Um, I haven't yet. I would like to do that at, um, at some point. Um, I think that I might increase my nitty knotty to instead of being one foot to be three feet. So that should give me about a 12 foot skein, I think. Um, and that wouldn't be too, too hard for me to do. Um, uh, to get longer gradients right now, I use pre-knit blanks. So I have a crank uh, kids knitting machine and I really only use it with worsted or bulky right now. It's not really meant for bulky yarns, but I can in about 20 minutes or half an hour create a blank. Unfortunately, as far as a knitting machine goes, it's really, really loud. So it's not cool to do it while watching a movie. Um, another thing I saw someone on Ravelry do is that they got a crank I-cord maker and they used that to make a really, really long I-cord and then they made mini skeins without cutting it, but mini skeins out of the I-cord and then put dyed those and then unraveled the whole thing to get a self-striking yarn. And so I think that that looks really cool and I wanna try it. Unfortunately, the I-cord maker I bought doesn't work on worsted weight yarn because I was like, oh great, I'll do this with 220 yards, no problem, but nope, it needs a thinner yarn. So I'm gonna need to do that with like 400 yards of yarn. And so we'll see, ooh, maybe that's what I'll do tonight while we're watching a movie. Um, <laughs> and so that might take a while. I bought a bunch of roving and plan to use mittens. Ooh, thrummed mittens. Um, yeah, so I found that it's, the roving when you first buy it is like, really, really fluffy. After I dye my roving, it doesn't quite look as pretty, but I, there's no, initially, like, I kind of have to fluff it a little bit, but I think it would work. I've never made thrummed mittens, but I think it would work just fine. Um, yeah, a lot of cranking, but we'll see how annoying <laughs> it is. I thought about offering the long gradient from my pre-made blanks um, as a Kickstarter reward. And so then I timed myself making one as fast as I could. And I was like, there's no way I can make a dozen of these. That would be too hard. Um, yeah, but I do like making my own blanks. The, so I think normally a skein of stroll yarn at Knit Picks is about 750. And the uh, stroll pre-knit blank that has two strands knit together um, that tends to run, tw that's $20. Um, so buying the blanks are expensive and you can't really find worsted blanks out there. So I got the knitting machine so I could make my own. Um, but I might want to get a higher quality knitting machine, crank knitting machine at some point. Um, there's a, oh, I forget the brand. Um, but there's one more geared for adults that's a couple hundred dollars that maybe I'll get at some point. Yes, it, can, it compacts down. The roving compacts down. That's good. Um, yeah, it does, definitely doesn't get rough. Oh, the Addy knitting machine. That was it. Um, if you saw my unboxing video and you had blanks. So blanks, yes. Blanks are pre-knit fabric that have the ends raw so you can unravel it after you're done knitting. And so I've done this to make like a really long gradient, dip dyed gradient. Oh, it's so pretty. Um, and... I did a broke, long broken violet gradient, which I think you can see at the top of my YouTube channel. Um, that's my cover photo. And yeah, and so then after you do that, you can either unravel it while wet onto a knitting knot or something, or unravel it dry and knit directly from it. 
Um, and then, wait, I could get an electric screwdriver for some of those plastic knitting machines. <gasps> I am going to need to look into that because my arm gets tired. <laughs> yeah, I think I might want, I, I've never, I need to look at more reviews for the adding knitting machine, but um, yeah, I, I am excited with, to try the Knit Picks uh, blanks because they are, versus the blanks I make are always in the round because it's just faster than doing the back and forth cranking for a straight blank. Um, but the Knit Picks ones are flat. They are knit with two strands of yarn together so you can make identical socks or mittens or whatever you want to out of them. And I will have a lot of videos coming up dying with them. Um, I have one sponsored video that's going to have a sock blank as the base and then six people um, are going to be, six blanks will be part of a sock blank special. And so I'll do some live dyeing and some random patterns. I think one person wants stripes and there's one person who wants a gradient. So I'm trying to like plan out and see which ones I can group together to do some live dyeing. Uh, wow. Yeah. Um, you can send me the link. Um, the, the easiest way to direct message me, because I'm not going to just say my email out right now, is through the Chemnitz Facebook page is a great way to um, direct message me. And I mean, there are, I'm not sure of how you can send messages on YouTube. I tried to do that to someone, for someone once and I couldn't figure that out. Um, but okay, I'm gonna check on our yarns. <laughs> oh man. You guys have good, oh, look at this. I mean, I wish, so the other thing on my wish list that I want recommendations for are is a new web is a webcam. Um, I love right now I'm live on my phone. Okay, that is getting a lot clearer. Um, right now I'm on my phone, and so I would love. Oh, that's clearing up nicely too. I think my timer is about to go off. I'll give these another five minutes and then remove them. Yeah, so I would love to get a dedicated webcam because then I could use my, I could set it up through the computer and the live streams, I would be able to use the static URL and I would be able to schedule my live streams through YouTube so you could see when I'm planning to come live next. Um, and so that would be really, really nice. But I'm a little overwhelmed looking at different webcam options. So advice on that would be awesome. Huh, an old Knit King flat machine. Oof. All right, my hands are so sweaty. But I didn't want to remove the gloves before now because I'm down. After this, I've got one pair of gloves left. Well, until my package of more gloves arrives later. Oh. I just went to look to see if I could figure out where my knitting machine was to show it to you. I think it's like a singer kids knitting machine. I do have a video of myself on the channel using it. And it's the ratings on Amazon aren't great. But I think that's because people expect some magic out of it. And mostly like, I it, mine doesn't clog or anything anymore. So it is nice. And I like it. It works. And it was like 20 or $30. So the price was right. Um, but my son had a birthday party a couple weeks ago, which meant that I had to pack everything up, move it upstairs. So that way we could have like 50 people in my home. And it was crowded and delightful chaos of a bunch of three and four year olds. <laughs> a Logitech one. Oh, for, um, for a webcam, the Hey Deaf one. Yeah, I would like to, can you zoom it? I, I would love to be able to zoom in and out. Um, that would be really nice. Okay. Violet even breaks on the skin? Probably. So I did see, and I think I'm gonna order some of this too. Um, <laughs> there is a special kind of hand wash 
that is specifically made to get dye out of your skin. And so Dharma sells this and I'm kind of excited to try it out. I still want to mostly focus on dyes and materials that are really easily accessible, but I am going to branch out a bit because that way, part of the reason why I want to try acid dyes and stuff is so that way I can easily compare the food coloring to the acid dyes um, because I can't really say, I know that the techniques are really similar, but I don't have, I need personal experience with it so that way I can answer more questions. Um, but I'm not going to abandon food coloring at all. Uh, there's still a lot, like a hundred different dining ideas that I have that are based around food coloring. Um, but I am excited to explore some of these things that Dharma has to offer. They also have a bottle that has like a sponge cap so that you could use to apply dye. And so I think I'm gonna get that and then let my one year old try to dye some yarn. Maybe give him some like violet or black, Wilton's black or something in there and see if I can not dye myself and my child. Um, so I know that people are kind of split on how they feel about, um, the, the Lucas making appearance in videos, but uh, sometimes the only way I can get some dyeing done is if I include the kids. So, oh, ooh, I wonder if that, you know, at the bottom was like a deep green versus a black, like a deep forest green. Oh, I, I plan to. Um, <laughs> I, I know many of you are backers of the Kickstarter, and even if you're not, you're here, you're chatting, and I just, I appreciate your support so much. Because um, thanks to like the Kickstarter, I'm now able to go and be like, ooh, I can get like 10 different colors of acid dyes to start with. Because I'm not just thinking like, ooh, about, because I've got the funds to do it already. I don't need to like start slow and then slowly expand on it. And so, and the nice thing about these dyes is that they will last, like I have already, enough dye probably in the house to film 35, the first 35 videos of Dye Pot Weekly. So if I were, I'm turning off the stove now. But with you, thanks to all of you, I now have enough, like I can explore different, so many different techniques and I'm really excited. All right, let's take out our broken black. And can you see, all right, there's comments, so I can't, yes. The yarns from today are going to be added to the Pick Your Own album. I'm going to try to do it before tomorrow morning. Um, oh, it's already almost 1.30. Um, yes, I, I am planning to add these to the You Pick album. Um, probably some point tonight. Um, so, but yeah, okay. So I'm not sure if you can see this really well. But even on this end, you can see that there's some uh, variation with the absorption of color. All right, so here, um, okay, the, I guess it's not really quite showing up. The blue is alternates between, there's like a deep blue. Ooh, and even within this skein, there's breaking. Um, Cause the colors just strike so, so fast with the stroll. Um, and, okay, I gotta move some of these. I'll recap some of these yarns and I'm going to risk my fingertips to try to actually no, I'm using the tongs uh, and maybe my fingertips a tiny bit um, to rearrange this so you can see it. Da -da -da -da. So here's the black which has a lot of water in it still. Okay, move you. Oh, my stove is dirty. All right. And this is our viewer choice. Okay. But even see in here in towards the center, because once I added this in, I didn't move it around a lot. It's wider in towards the center of this edge. Um, check out that teal. Ooh, and that gets like a deeper and deeper green. And I have no idea what color this other end is. <laughs> I mean, we know there's red in it and yellow. Um, because we did the copper, but 
I think I'm gonna need to wait till it dries to tell, ooh, look at that deep green on the inside. Um, okay, I don't know if you can really see. Um, there's definitely some red in that edge, but oh, this is so pretty. I never, ever would have combined these yarns if it wasn't for your suggestions. Um, see, I told you that like we could create magical colors together. That was like the big part of my thank you and stuff. And oh, like I wouldn't have been able to do this without you guys. <laughs> yeah, this is the one that um, is about half teal, half copper. Um, I used approximately a quarter teaspoon each. Um, it wasn't very accurately measured. But I will add all these to, for the, to the U-Pick albums. Um, they're going to be wet, obviously, when they're in the, in the albums. So um, the colors might change even more. But I will... Uh, Oh, and I'm also probably going to be photographing them under unnatural light because I don't think I'll be able to wash all of these until I pick the until after the kids go to bed, or they'll maybe maybe Lucas will hang out with me while I wash them. Um, <laughs> and I'll also try to before um, I'll do a recap video of all these yarns so that way everyone can see how they turned out. But I will do a quick recap of the yarns that we dyed today um, before ending this stream. But thank you guys so much. This was so much fun. Yeah, I, um, I'll, I'll try to keep note over which ones bleed a lot. But all right, so we started off with copper. And so it's, it's kind of a burnt orange. Um, so I like that it's, not, it's very saturated, but not electric. And then we did, ah, the teal. Okay, so it's a good, kind of a toss up. Oh, I won't forget to use the salad spinner. <laughs> um, it still usually takes a couple days for the yarn to dry. And I have a lot of yarns drying right now, so that doesn't help, but that's good for everyone. Um, the teal I think is a new favorite of mine. This and royal blue are ones that I am excited to play with more. Then we've got juniper green, which I think it would be fun to mix this with cop <laughs> copper sometime. Um, but just to, it would, I mean, I think adding more copper would just kind of bring it a little more to a brownish green, which would be cool. All right, then we have our Kelly green which it did, we do have a, this is pretty much a tonal yarn. Um, I think there was blue at the end. I think that I just was, I still added it into the dye bath a little fast. So I plan to play with Ke um, the Kelly Green more in the future to see if we can get some more, quote, true breaking. All right, so those were the ones that we started with. And then we went and had some viewer requests and so we used the those ones were all done on the knit picks uh wool of the andes worsted weight blank and then we did not blank but bear yarn so then we did black which so this usually ends up being kind of like a burgundy um a really really deep it's very saturated i'm excited to see how it um dries but yeah, and how close to black we got. Um, and then it broke until we got this like bright blue at the end. And then you guys requested, ooh, I would hold these both at the same time, but the bowls are really hot. So we mixed together the teal and the copper and got this unknown color at the bottom and then the, the teal at the end. You know, so I started to say before, I'm kind of torn when it comes to reskeining. On one hand, I like seeing the way that the colors mix together. On the other hand, it takes time. And so, um, you know, time that I would pro rather probably put into dyeing more yarn versus spending the time reskeining. 
I did decide all the yarns that I dyed with the Knit Picks palette base, which is a two ply, 100% wool yarn. I ended up reskaining them because they kind of, it wasn't felted, but the fibers were kind of stuck together a bit. Um, and so it unraveling it uh, from, uh, was not a problem at all. It just didn't look quite as pretty. Um, yeah, it's kind of, I, I'm unsure if it's going to be more of a brown or kind of a deep, 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 like evergreen kind of thing. I'll have to see how it dries, but it's, yeah, this is a really rich colorway. And so one I'm excited to play with more. So thank you. Um, and it's funny because at first I thought it looked pretty similar to the black, um, but they actually do look pretty quickly. It's easy to what to rescan is to put the loop on your swift then ball on the ball winder um yeah i mean i don't have a big problem um winding it onto the nitty knotty it just it's just time that it that it takes and so like personally as a customer if i'm gonna buy hand painted yarn i like to see the yarn as it was dyed because i like to get a sense of how long the color repeats are obviously there's some yarns that you have to rescan like when i do the the dying of the full cake of yarn to get the asymmetrical colorways, those I absolutely have to reskin because otherwise they would never dry. Um, but yeah, and I think that when I when I kind of informally polled you guys, it seemed like people were pretty split on whether they liked reskinned or not. I like, since if I can't knit up the yarn, reskinning the yarn helps give a sense of, helps you visualize how it might be knit up and how the colors mix together. But the reason why I don't end up knitting swatches is also a lot because of time, but also that the way that the colors mix and pool changes a lot based on the project that you're doing. So, um, yeah, but I do uh, hope this winter to have some more time knitting and that things will not be as easily destroyed. Let me just check and see. Ooh, yeah, to do, I have thought, and I should actually write this down, but to do um, three skeins, add it in, so add a bunch of dye to the pot, slowly dip dye in one, or not maybe not so slowly if these greens, but dip dye one, dip dye two, and then dip dye three, um, add it in, so then you get like some different tonal yarns as a set. I think that that would be really, really cool. Or maybe even... Well, I think it could be cool with 300 grams of yarn or by making mini skeins and doing that. I think that I want to do some mini skeins when I do the indigo. Since the indigo, it lasts for about a week, but I'm trying to plan a lot of different um, dyeing projects to use with that because it can do a lot of dye, a, a lot of fiber on one go. So I have some t-shirts. I'm going to make myself a dyer's apron so that way I don't paint my shirts when I lean on a counter and I have a bunch of other um, ideas to do with the indigo. Um, I still have some bare silk hankies that I want to put in. Um, whoop. <laughs> and I keep, when I'm ducking behind, I'm going over to the laptop. Yeah, it's divided 50-50 with your customers. Um, it depends on the gauge and project. Uh, yeah. Oh, but yes. Oh, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I know that I've been on um, about an hour and a half. And so that's a while and a long time to watch. But I really appreciate how I'm just checking how close those I really appreciate how engaged you guys have been. That makes it really fun. And I almost feel like except I can't hear you feel like you guys are here with me in my kitchen. And so it's just a lot of fun. Um, yeah, and we dyed six skeins of yarn, and so that's really, really, really awesome. Um, yeah, I'm, I try to go live when uh, the kids are at school, because when I don't, inevitably someone comes out of bed and says that they need me for something or other. Um, and yeah, and so make sure also, if you want to dye along at home, I was using Knit Picks yarns today. 
You can buy single skeins or packs of 20 and they have a 15% off sale right now. So you can get 15% off a 20 pack that is already 15% off the original prices. My affiliate link is in the comments, um, but you don't need to do that to the sale price. Is, the sale is available to everyone. I think along the top of their website, they have the, the coupon code. And so, yeah, let me know um, either through Facebook or once the video is live um then the comments stay these comments kind of disappear but let me know what you would like to see me die and i'll try to pick something up while yarn is on sale thank you so much for watching and i will catch you guys next time bye